Uh, good morning, wonderful people of Eurocam. Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here with all of you today. Uh, and I am here to talk to you about a phrase that I find just as problematic as my appreciation uh, for the angry white dude whose music actually inspired uh, the talk title that I'm about to give to you today. Will the real technical people please stand up? So how often uh, throughout your career have you heard this particular phrase, so-and-so is not technical? How often have you found yourself saying this particular phrase? Oh, there's so few hands. I knew I came to the right place. That is terrific. Um, so I've been hearing this phrase for about the past 15 years, quite regularly, uh, which is coincidentally the exact amount of time that I've been working in the technology industry. And frequently, I hear it applied to myself, which doesn't really resonate with me. Um, I was privileged to have access to a computer almost from birth, and we'll learn a little bit more about that in the next slide. And I was also immensely privileged in that I went to school in Silicon Valley, and we happened to have a computer lab filled with Apple IIe computers, allowing me to write my very first program almost, wow, more than 20 years ago. I'm getting old. Uh, and even before that, I spent a lot of time abusing VI uh, doing ASCII art illustrations of lyrics from The Sound of Music because I was a weird kid, um, and I'm still weird. So even more strange to me, though, is not just when people apply this phrase to me, because I can understand that since I've chosen... I have chosen to have a slipping microphone. I've chosen not to be a developer. I've chosen to be a community manager <clears throat> and someone who's a practitioner of developer relations. Okay, maybe you feel like that's not technical. But what I feel is very strange is, as part of this career, I go to a number of conferences every year, giving talks like this one, or just hanging out in a trade show booth. And the number of people who will walk up at a conference like OSCON, uh, or what's another great one? The Open Source Developers Conference, or LinuxConf AU, and who uh, will reach out to shake your hand, and then the next phrase out of their mouth will be, I'm not technical, but. So I don't usually think of non-technical people as the kind of folks who attend OSCON. I don't know. Just a thought. So when I think about people who aren't technical, someone immediately springs to mind. My mom. My mom, the Unix programmer. My mom, the person who exercised great patience all the years of her life dealing with my dad, my dad, the technophobe, my dad, whose Nokia candy bar phone is never actually charged because he refuses to use it, my dad, who I had to teach how to use an ATM when I was 14 years old because he had never withdrawn cash from the bank without talking to a live human being. This was a ex very interesting experience, which I will tell you about over a delicious beverage, if you would like to hear. It did not go well. You know, and, I, and when I think, again, about the people in my life who I would think of as not technical, I think of these women, my, some of my dearest friends in the US. And these are the same folks who are consistently handing me their smartphones, and I'm performing all sorts of software updates for them, and I'm introducing them to the mystical powers of the Yahoo Mail app which they did not know existed. And, you know, they refer to me as the, the techie genius of the family. And yet, when I, when I think about their daily lives, right, I think about my friend the veterinarian, who required more years of medical school training than a doctor who works with human beings and whose patients cannot actually speak to her to tell her what is wrong. I think of my friend, the high school teacher, in South Florida, who teaches children English who have just arrived as refugees from countries like Haiti, and who is able to navigate a grossly underfunded public school system in order to teach them a brand new language, and also able to navigate the cultural nuances that she's not familiar with. And I am going to switch mics because this is totally not working. Hang on one second, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, look, now I have a mic. I win. 
Um, <laughs> so my friend, the school teacher, who can navigate all these cultural nuances with which she's completely unfamiliar. Or my friend, the office manager, who I have watched do so many bizarre workarounds for, the, uh, for their office software that does uh, management of dental records. And if any of you in the audience hate, I mean hate, filing expense reports, try using software to manage dental records that has to be compliant with about 15 different insurance companies' back ends and that has to do voice recognition because you would rather use Oracle Financials immediately. So again, when I think of these, these folks in my life and I think, you know, I don't think that they're not technical. I just think they're not my flavor of technical. So I find the phrase, person is not technical, to be incredibly problematic. And I think one of the biggest reasons I find it to be problematic is I can't even tell you what this means. I don't know what so-and-so is not technical actually means. It seems to have different definitions. It seems to be applied completely at random. And even if we, like, let's dive in. Let's analyze it. What does it mean? So maybe it's someone who doesn't have a computer science degree, except we're all very happy to tell stories of very famous developers, very famous business people who dropped out of college or who never went to college at all. Is it somebody who doesn't write code? Well, I've written code. I don't do it for a living. And what about all of those people who work like, I don't know, civil engineers, civic planners, the people who design our roadways and build our bridges? They don't write software. Do you want the person who builds your bridge to be not technical? Because I do not. Anyone who would like, you know, who would like to indulge in that, I suggest you let me know what city you live in, and I will not visit you, but you can come hang out with me in Amsterdam anytime. Not a problem. Um, are we also to say that if only things that are technical are things that involve software, what about all the hardware engineers out there? How many of you, when's the last time you soldered something? I see a few hands. These lovely people are technical too. Um, also, I have some thermal compound that I would love to share with you because there is nothing more fun than putting together a board and it's been a long time, so we should do this. So, this phrase is difficult because when you hear the words, so-and-so, person is not technical, this implies some kind of immutable binary, right? Which is just, it's simply false. There is not a single one of us who was born keyboard in hand knowing how to program. That would be deeply uncomfortable for our mothers and it is also logistically impossible. So when we use this phrase, when this is, this is the phrase that shapes our thoughts, we need to think about what thoughts we're thinking and what information we're projecting out into the universe when we use these words. And I'm going to say that I firmly believe that this phrase is utterly and completely toxic. I think it's code for, I don't have to think about what you really know and what you really don't know. I don't have to spend time to teach you things you don't know because you are not technical. I have no responsibility to do so and there is no value in doing so. I think that this phrase is often code for, this person is not enough like me for me to believe in their skills and abilities. And if you think that perhaps that's not true, I challenge you to count the number of women or other folks who are in underrepresented groups in the technology industry who have started a conversation with you with the phrase, I am not technical. People don't start that conversation with you because that's what they're thinking. It's because that's what they've been told over and over again. And that is the message that they have absorbed and that they carry with them into the world. And this phrase is awful. 
it stops us from all sorts of things, from achieving pay equity to really having effective collaboration in our organizations because we are not valuing the contributions that everyone brings to our projects, to our companies, to our teams. We are deciding that people are other. We are deciding that what they do is not good enough. And this is only going to harm us as an industry and as a community. So I would urge everyone to simply edit this phrase out of your vocabulary. When you say, so-and-so is not technical, perhaps what you mean is, this person does not know how to program yet. Or, this person does not understand the TDF-IDF algorithm, which I can tell you right now I do not understand. So if anyone would like to explain that to me later, I welcome your education. Just don't use it. Just like I had to teach myself not to say, this code is lame, we can teach ourselves to not say, this person is not technical. I'd like to conclude with some extremely wise words from a woman named Kara Souls. Has anyone had the opportunity here to meet Kara? Kara is the knees of bees. She is fantastic. Um, she's a community human at Puppet Labs. And when she saw me tweeting that I would be here speaking at Eurocamp, uh, she was really, really excited. And she wanted to chat about the talk. And I sat down with her and we shared some notes. And, and once again, Kara's extremely wise words stuck with me. And she said, I don't understand why I would stay in an industry that defines me solely by what I cannot do instead of all the things that I am capable of doing. And as we hear consistently that we have a pipeline problem, or more accurately, that we have a leaky pipeline problem, and that we are not able to effectively retain technical talent, how can we then continue to use phraseology and thinking that undervalues so many of the activities that are the first step towards people becoming developers, be that writing documentation, program management, or any number of sophisticated tasks that simply don't involve creating software? So my friends, I ask you, Will the real technical people please stand up? And that is all of you here today. You guys are awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, this is my favorite. This is question guy, question figure guy. Does anybody have any awesome questions or experiences they would like to share? because I know I'm between you and coffee, which is terrible. Um, hi, uh, thanks for your talk. Um, I myself, I mean, I must be technical. I just stand up and <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm also studying this field, but I um, would also consider myself not as too, being too technical, but I would see it more as a compliment because I think there's so much more you should know um, when you program and um, yeah, I don't, there's so much more you should um, have empathy and you, I mean, um, technic is um, just for the people and you should um, know about their, their feelings about technical and their um, needs of technic. So I think being not totally technical is just a plus, in my opinion. I agree with you completely. Sorry, I had to read. I'm, I'm losing my hearing in my old age. Yes. I agree. Yay. <laughs> Besides, I, how many of you have friends who literally all, only spend time with their keyboard? I mean, I have some of them, and I, and I really love them dearly, but occasionally I would like to talk to you not on IRC. Just because, you know, seems like it could be fun. More questions. Other questions. I feel like people have a deep need for caffeine, which I respect. Nice human. Hi. Uh, thank you for sharing your points. I totally I agree with most of the things that you said. But uh, the only thing that I would like to add is I think 
technic are you technical can mean different things in different regions. Mm -hmm. So for example, I am from Brazil and we have a special kind of course which we call technical course. So when you ask someone like, are you technical? You can ask this for anyone and you just want to know if the person has a bachelor degree or a, this kind of technical degree. And in this case, I think it's, I think it's not harmful because you just want to know what kind of degree the person has in order to maybe select a kind of salary or something. And, but I, I totally agree that this may cause like, confusion if you are in America, if you are in Europe, and if you are in Brazil. So uh, do, would you have some suggestion on how to do with this? Because in Brazil, we, you don't have an alternative question. Like, <laughs> So uh, thank you for your question. This, this is not a part of my experience. Um, so uh, it is always great to learn about how folks around the world actually experience life. Um, I have not spent enough time in Brazil, clearly. Um, I don't have a suggestion right at the moment, but I would like to think about that and get back to you if that is okay. Cool beans, okay. Other nice human. So you're talking to a group of people, for instance, at this conference, and someone says about someone else that they are not technical. How can you respond? Well, excellent question, thank you. Uh, so it, it depends on kind of the, the kind of interaction I'm having with someone. Like, if someone says, I'm not technical, then usually I say, oh, okay, great, so what brought you here today? And then I typically hear something along the lines of, well, I'm a program manager and I oversee the design of this software package. Or I'm a user experience designer and I'm working on this project. Or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I say, wow, that's, that sounds pretty technical to me. Um, and I've also had a, a lot of conversations with uh, partners at conferences. And sometimes gentlemen are the plus one just so everyone knows. Actually, I think this crowd is not the crowd that I need to explain that to. Um, and, you know, when they tell me that they are, you know, I'm not technical, but um, the number of them who will have had in-depth conversations with their wives or husbands about uh, the topics that they encounter every day is non-trivial. And then I just smile and say, I, I think you're a lot more technical than you give yourself credit for, just, just so you know. Um, and, you know, usually people take that pretty well, and it encourages them to, to think better of themselves. Cool, thank you. Anyone else? Coffee, coffee, coffee. Oh, wow, there's more. You guys are dedicated. I want coffee. <laughs> um, thanks for this, uh, this talk. I think it's very important to, to remind that what we're saying will frame the world. And I just want to comment with something. You know this comment stupid gender division about children that girl is for literature and math for, and science for boys? I think it's very hor horrible. And uh, it's important that there are just knowledges and means to achieve something. And whatever it is, it's, as you said, uh, what you do that frame you and not what you know or what you have studied. So thanks, thanks a lot. Awesome, plus one. Thank you. Let us go and have a delicious beverage of your choice. Thank you for having me.